Oh, it's transition time. The death of a company culture. A young lady makes a TikTok video showing she was the only person that showed up to an empty workplace. She had to show up twice a week for the sake of the company culture. Social media has put the nail in the coffin for the brick and mortar companies. She sat in front of her computer, probably thinking, why did I burn my gas up when I could have stayed at home and worked at my computer? Let's dive into the reasons why employees no longer want to come back to work. The attraction for the company is no longer present, and the employees that work for the, these companies are not awarded with high-paying salaries, big bonuses, and the time off that is requested, they have to fight for that time. You would think that if it's their time, they could go out. Mm, that's not the case. No transparency. You do not trust your employee that is giving you every reason in the world not to trust them. The conversations are one-sided. It, it is the company's way or the employee can hit the highway. The employees do not practice what they preach. They set up ways to keep you from prospering. They bring in specialists to cut costs that affects the employee's benefits. Oh, that one size fit all project management software. Come on, every employee is different. Companies force every employee to organize their work like they're on the weasel wheel. The next time the software screws up, you tell them to take it out the software as a check. They can take it out of some other place also. Don't expect the employees to trust the company with the when the company trusts the software that manages the operation of the company, there's no bonding between management and workers. Remember, the company has bonded with the software. What member of management came out their office and tried to bond with the employee? Did you get a reward? No, you got a final warning. And you didn't realize that the warning was for the next day and you came into work and you worked all day? and then you was terminated. That sounds real familiar. Appreciation? What appreciation? You put your blood and sweat and tears into that company for years, and you got a, a Timex? You didn't get a Rolex? You got a pen that didn't have a backing on it? You couldn't even pin the pen to your shirt or your blouse? I remember the code of conduct that was not followed by the company I worked for the company did not have respect for the individual. The employees were not treated with dignity. The company didn't listen, and the employees were made out of examples. The company did not embrace the employees' ideas, and they certainly weren't looking to embrace the employees' experience and the, their differences. Code of conduct number two, services of the customer. Oh, the merchandise comes first. And the customers are getting services that they don't want. And the company anticipates the employees and the customers are going to rob the store blind. Who do you think the cameras are for? You didn't know who were the real criminals? Well, how do you feel about that one? Remember the customer that got accused for taking the merchandise? You know. The TikTok person that had taken the, the baloney pack. Oh, did the company exceed expectations on that one? I bet the TikTok customer didn't expect that one. Well, code of conduct number three, strive for excellence. Companies absolutely treat their workers like they are the prop, that they are property. This makes the employees perform at their worst. The company tells their own work. This is our place. This is our company. They tout it, stick their chests out. Stop treating the employees like you own them. Code of conduct number four, act with integrity. Really? 
The companies are not honest. They speak with a forked tongue. They definitely don't comply with all the law. And where did all those EEOC complaints come from? Where did the Supreme Court case Walmart v. Duke come from? It is on the record. Walmart is not the only company. This is inclusionary. It is not, but it is not all. It is and other companies treat their employees in the same manner. Well, maybe all this mistreatment would help you get over your fears. Maybe this treatment would help you get over your YouTube fears. Unless you want to join the 4 million employees that's stressed out and still on that weasel wheel. Seeing this young lady at her desk alone in tears makes you wonder if you would be happier at home or at work. The government is the one that implemented the stay-at-home workforce. It ended up with the employees being more productive and so much more happier. Now, we can't have an employment system actually working. The government would rather have a broken system. They call it consistency. Another way to look at this picture is less stress at the job. Who will the doctors treat? Who will the psychiatrists treat? What about the pharmaceutical industry? What about all those pills that's going to go to waste? It makes you back up and ask yourself the question, do our nation want a nation of healthy working people? Do our nation want a nation of healthy people, period. Ah, uh, it's a lot of money involved. Hmm, it all makes you wonder. But I really hope this helped you. This is Linda Ballard at 911 Help. And the clock is ticking. And thank you for hearing my voice.